So let's start then with, with some items of, of common usage. I'm going to start up here in the menu, here with the, the view menu. We have some new items here in version 10 that I want to emphasize. And this is uh, colors, for example. This uh, default color we have now is kind of a dark gray. But you can go with all sorts of different colors. And here is a, a yellow, which kind of washes out on my screen. Uh, I can go with a slate blue, which is kind of pretty. Uh, the pale blues. Um, if you really want to, you can go with purple and do that. Um, and black and gray, black and yellow. Uh, some people have created a color configurations for their for their school colors. Um, some have done that. Um, let's go back to the, the default color here. But uh, you can devise your own color schemes. And for some people, that really resonates well with them. They like to change their desktop to make them feel happier during while they're doing their Bible study, I suppose. Um, other people, the color really doesn't matter to them. But uh, that is a new a new feature for version 10. So, so that's easy to, to get to as well. Uh, another feature that also is new in version 10 is the ability to scale the program. So if I go to the menu option view and go to scaling, you have here the uh, scaling option. And I'm gonna, I have it set for 100%. That's your normal default scaling. But if you have a smaller screen or you have a very high uh, resolution or screen, you may want to change the scaling. In fact, I'm going to change this to 125% and click OK, and it's going to restart BibleWorks. Uh, but you notice that everything is now slightly larger. So you have the different options uh, there to scale the program. So that can be very useful, say, if you're projecting in a large classroom, for example. That can be very useful. Or if you're on a small screen. I, I have, say, I mentioned a 7-inch tablet. And uh, I, I bumped it up to 125% scaling, and that is quite helpful. Now, one of the things you're going to want to do the most is to read the Bible text. And BibleWorks has uh, over 250 versions in over 40 languages. So you're going to want to be adding in your favorites, removing ones you're not going to want to use. So let me show you how you can add and remove some of these things in a, in a very easy way. Come into the, the Browse window. And remember the context menu, very important. Context menus are, are crucial for working throughout the program in a very rapid way. And um, I have here the New American Standard, for example. Now say that I'm not currently wanting to, to read the New American Standard. I can put my cursor on the, on the NAU, that's the 1995 update, and right click, notice the very top context menu, remove this version from this playlist. And there it's gone. Now, you're not, you're not deleting anything, you're just removing it from the display. So you don't have to worry about hurting anything there. Okay, so it's not gone forever. How do you get it back? How do you get it back? Good question. Glad you asked. We're going to go up here to notice there's the uh, three letter abbreviations. That is a, your uh, version abbreviations button there. And I'm going to click, and you notice now you have a listing of your different versions, or different languages rather, and English. And I'm going to go here to NAU, and I'm going to select it. And now you notice the NAU is once again back. So it's very easy to add and remove versions that way. Now, if you want to change your Bible verse, so we're in Genesis 1-1 right now. Notice at the very top in the header, it sees Genesis. And say we want to go to Psalm 2-3. Down arrow, and Psalm and then right next to it is the chapter, and go to 2, and then down here, 3. By the way, if you want to see, I don't remember how many verses are in Psalm 2. Go right here and look, oh, there's 12 verses. So you can see that very easily. So. Okay, so that's how you can change your verse display in the browse window. And uh, you don't have to go typing anything. You can very easily go to that. Now, I have the, the NAU as my primary version. We call this our search version. Um, that, that is important because if I, if I go to conduct any searches in the, on the command line, which we'll talk about in a little bit, that's going to be your, your primary version that you're going to be using. That comes into play for something else here as well. Because here I'm reading verse by verse, and I can compare different uh, translations and read the Hebrew texts. But say I just want to just read down through the New American Standard text. Okay, first of all, you want to have make sure that this is the, the version here that you want to read. If it's not, say I decide, you know, I'm NAU, but I want to actually read the ESV. I'm going to go here to the ESV abbreviation and just double click. 
Now notice that changes here. That's now my search version. Now this button right here to the to the left of that abbreviation is going to toggle between the multi-version mode, which is what we're in right now. We have multiple versions that you can compare, and what's called the browse mode. So when I click that button, now I'm reading the ESV. There you go. That was my next question. Yes. I anticipated. Mm -hmm. So the ESV here is uh, our, our main search version, so that's the text that displays when I go to the browse mode. So I'm going to go back to multi-version mode. All right. So. So we have the analysis window. Now, if, I, if I'm on uh, the Net Bible here and I put my cursor on the Net Bible, and you notice that the Net Bible notes appear. If I go to the New American Standard, uh, the New American Standard text is tagged for Strong's numbers. So as I move my cursor over the different words in the New American Standard, it automatically shows the New American Standard Strong's definitions. So that'll do that automatically. Uh, the ESV uh, may have some, has some version notes here. There's a cross-reference to Jeremiah 5.5. So each version has its own specific item. Some versions do not have anything. Others will have uh, notes or lexicons, things like that. I, guess. I noticed that if I put the cursor over, like on yours, it says NAU. <laughs> if yes. I put the cursor over there in analysis, it gives me information there. Mm -hmm. Yes. But I can't scroll down because when I move my cursor to use the scroll down, I can't. And this isn't a touch screen. That's my very so. next. Very next nice point of cover. <laughs> How do you keep that from moving? Yes. Yes. Okay. So when I'm in my, say I'm, I'm putting my cursor over a Greek word here, and it works the same way with the with what you described there with the version information. Um, I want to be able to get down further because there's a scroll bar here, and I want to be able to scroll down here to get the information like I'm doing there. Now, what you do is you put your cursor where you want it. So the information is displaying in the analysis window. Now hold down the shift key. And now I can move my cursor around all over the place and notice that nothing in the analysis window is changing while I'm moving my cursor. Okay, so now I can go over here and I can release the shift key and I can scroll down and read the rest of the text. Okay, so yes, just hold down the shift key and that'll, that'll work with everything. So I put my cursor on the net by, or on the NAU and I want to be able to go over and just scroll that information. I'm going to hold down the shift key and I can go over here and now I can use the scroll bar and I can scroll down there for the information. Okay, excellent question. So. Now if you really, you constantly want to have that staying the same, you can go, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me, let me pause on that, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, one thing I do want to do in the analysis window, notice that I have mine set up probably different than what a number of you have it set up. Uh, the very top lexicon I have is the uh, Danker's Greek New Text a Greek New Testament lexicon. Below that I have the Freiburg's Analytical Greek lexicon. Below that I have uh, 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 Bauer and Gingrich's lexicon, which is, by the way, is an extra cost module. I, I should mention, I have uh, all the modules included on mine. Uh, if you have Bauer's, you may not have all of them in there. Uh, so some of the things I have here, there's not that many, but some of the things I have you may not have. How do we add extra lexicons in here? I'm going to hold down the shift key, and I'm going to just go over here to the uh, analysis window. I'm going to right click, remember the context menus. And it's default analysis window Greek lexicons. And I'm going to select that menu option. And now notice, and this is new for version 10 also, that you can select which lexicons you wish, wish to display. I don't have all my Greek lexicons displaying. Um, and the order may be different too. You can also change the order. Notice the up and down items here as well. So I want to danker at the top. Now say I wanted to um, select, say, Thayer, and I'm going to double click. So now it's checked. Now say I want to put that at the very top. I'm going to move it up to the very top, and then I'm going to click OK. And now my cursor on a Greek word, notice by the very top lexicon is Thayer. So you can move them around as you wish, and select whichever ones you want to display. I'm going to go back here again, and I'm just going to Double click on Thayer, and now Thayer will not display now. So you can do that with all of your available Greek lexicons. Okay, and now we're back to my original display. Uh, by the way, my strategy for the how I have my lexicon set up, this is not the default display, but I have uh, Danker, which is uh, an, an, essentially an abridgment of the BDAG lexicon. And it's, also, it's a briefer one. I want to have some briefer uh, lexicon entries at first. I have Freeberg before that. That's also a, a a little bit of a briefer lexicon, 
but it has some good information. It's a little different than what Danker will be. And then I have my larger uh, B Dank uh, down further in my list, so I can scroll if I want to get more information. So, otherwise, if you have B Dank at the very top, and you have a lot of information to kind of go through, if all you want to do is try and get a, a quick reading, you're reading through the text. So, that was my strategy. Maybe that maybe that worked for you. So, and the same thing works for, if I right click and I go over here to the default analysis window, Hebrew lexicons. You have the same thing here in Hebrew. I mean, we don't have as many Hebrew lexicons available, but you can select the ones that you want and put them in the order that you wish. And display whichever ones you want. Okay. Now, um, another tool here in the analysis window, which would be very helpful, is the use tab. See here. These are all tabs here that you can that you can select. I'm going to select the use tab, and now when I put my cursor on a word, it automatically searches for it. I don't have to click anything. I don't have to construct any searches. I just move my cursor, and it automatically conducts my search for me. No matter which of your versions you're wanting to search it. Now by default, notice like in this search right here um, on the English word chords in the New American Standard. This is all in the book of Psalms, because that's the, what's set up here. It's just it's in the book. I can select book, and I can do the current book only, and that will change. If I go to, say, Galatians, it'll only have searches in Galatians, or Ephesians, or Genesis. But I can also select the entire version, so if I want to conduct a search through my entire, new, say, New American Standard text, or ESV text, or my Greek text, or Hebrew text, I can select that as well. My, my search. See, now I have all of my different uh, search hits for the entire version. And I didn't have to construct any searches. Automatically conducts it for me. You also have at the bottom here is a pericope range. That comes off of the Bible outline. So this outline that's here in the browse window that we talked about, that has a range of verses. So maybe it's 10 verses. And this then, if I select pericope range, it'll show how many hits within that range. Notice here it only, the word only occurs once. Let me uh, try and find uh, and. Okay, so the pericope range here, I'd probably all of Psalm 2. But uh, you notice it has all the hits just within that. And it's not within the whole book of Psalms. It's just within that Psalm 2. So that's what the Bible outline tells me. So that can be very useful if you want to, if you're just looking at, say, um, sections in Genesis, or maybe at the beginning of the Gospel of John, for example. Uh, that can be really useful to see if there's patterns of the words of repeating. So that can be useful. Um, now the other item here is a custom range, which I won't get into just yet. That is our search limits. We'll be talking about search limits in a little while as well today. But the custom range goes according to the search limits that you have. So just as a preview of what, what you can do with that. So say if you have a limit to say Genesis 1, 1 through 2, 3, your creation accounts, and you want to do John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18, the prologue of John, you may want to then conduct searches then throughout those two sections. So a custom search limit will allow you to do that, and the use tab will make use of that custom search limit. Of course, so say you want to compare just Luke and Acts, you only want to have searches in Luke and Acts, you can set up that search limit, and then the use tab will show all the results for both Luke and Acts. So that's, that's also very powerful as well. But the, by default, it's the book only. So that can be a very useful tool. So, so the use tab is very easy to use. In fact, I, my guess would be for a lot of your work, that's going to be your primary search tool. Because a lot of times you just want to see where does this word occur in the book. That's a lot of my search. I do a lot of book studies. And I want to find out where else does this word appear in this book. 